what's up? My name is Samuel Leeds, and in this video, I'm going to be rating all of the different money-making schemes and skills that there are from worst to best. I'm here with my brother and business partner, Russell Leeds. We have not discussed this prior to this debate right now. I say debate, we might agree. It might be everything's agreed. It might be that everything's agreed. I have written down all of the different things I can think of. Stock market investing, drop shipping, garage sailing, cryptocurrency, copywriting, rent to rent, Forex. Deal selling, affiliate marketing, and network marketing. I've obviously not put property investing in there. Well, there's a couple of property things because I thought property investing, obviously, I'm going to say 10 because this is a property investment channel. These are the other stuff. So we'll start with the stock market. Boom. What are you saying? Stock market, 1 to 10. How good of a money-making investment skill is it? I think the stock market is, is decent. What did you raise it out of 10? 7. Okay, I've got 6. Okay. And I think that the stock market investing, I mean, obviously you can invest in the stock market. You can also trade with the stock market. I'm really talking about investing in the stock market. I think it's boring, but I think that it's safe. I think compared to a lot of stuff like cryptocurrency. Well, it depends. You say it's safe. It depends what you, which stock you're investing in. Right. If you're okay. investing in individual stock. Index funds, presumably. Uh, but this is presuming that you're skilled in it, right? You can say that about anything. You could say if you're crap at it. Not really property. Yeah. If you're crap at property investing, you lose a lot of money. You could buy a, a lemon buy a property that you think's got great potential to be developed. True. We've even done that. But if you're just buying generic vanilla, I suppose that's the same as buying an index fund, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Fair enough. So it's, it's reasonably safe if you do it right, but it's boring. It's not going to get you I, rich quickly. I don't find it super exciting. I, no, it's definitely not quick. It's definitely a very slow way, but I think it's a solid way. A lot of people do it in America. It's much more popular in America. It is. The thing I love about property though, and I'm not just going to keep talking about how great property is, but with property, you can do the slow, boring vanilla stuff, but you can also do the quick, exciting stuff. Anyway, next, drop shipping. Right out of 10. Six. I put six. No, I didn't. I put five. I'm slightly more optimistic that every vote so far, I've been one up on you. Drop shipping to me is great if you're a teenager or something. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. And in the comments, tell me if I'm being harsh. I'm not a big fan. Come on. Imagine like 40 years old, wife and kids and that, and you're there drop shipping. If I was working in JD Sports, making £2,000 a month and I hated my job, drop shipping all the way. Cool. No problem. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But the next one's similar, which is garage sailing. That, I think, is ridiculous. I'm going to give it a zero. No, it's not uh, mate, zero. It, it is a zero. It's the kind of thing that you could do. It, you shouldn't even be thinking about it. The reason it's a zero is because that should not, those thoughts should not even be in your head. What is garage sailing? So you go to gr car boot sales, or garage, you, go, if you're American, sailing, you go yeah. to garages, get stuff for real cheap peanuts, and then put it on Facebook Marketplace and sell it for a reasonable price, and you make money. It's an entrepreneurial skill. I wouldn't no. give it a zero. No, it's a zero because it's it's not normally that. What it normally is is what have we got in our house that we could sell? You've turned it into a bit of a business. I think it's a bit of a business. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about garage selling, doesn't he? If you're just selling your own crap, no, it's no, no. a zero. You're going but out. Listen, it's a zero. If you're selling other people's crap, That's what you're you'll doing. make it all right. You go. This is what you're doing. You go. Another thing that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about is he says like you can go on like uh, Facebook Marketplace and get free stuff. Get free stuff and then sell it for like cheap. I would do that if I was 17, 18. Yes. If my kids did that, I'd be like, yeah, well done, kids. Yeah, it's. But it's, if you did it, <laughs> mate, it's one step up from a paper round. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it almost you, is. It, do you know what though? Do you know what I don't want to do on this video? I don't want to poo-poo anybody because some people are working in jobs in factories making 1,500 quid. And for, for, for them, stop, this is a really good starting point. Ah, uh, it's not. Why? Because you start, you're doing the wrong thing. You're climbing the wrong tree. You're doing the wrong, you shouldn't be, I don't think you should be doing that. Unless you're a child. That's harsh, bro. I would give it a three. It's between a zero and Why a one. Why does Gary Vaynerchuk, because he seems like a good person, right? I've met him. Yeah. Why would he tell people to do garage sailing? Do you know, it's like the Dave Ramsey kind of mindset for me, that is. It's like the, the, the scrimping and the set. It's like, I think it's crap. <sighs> All right, next one is uh, cryptocurrency. I mean, we've done a little bit of cryptocurrency. Yeah. We've, yeah. Dip, we've dipped our toe uh, in the water. Robert Kiyosaki, who I respect greatly, who is a living legend, yeah. is a massive advocate for investing in Bitcoin. Right. I'm not. I think... I don't like it much. There's no service. There's no. You're not adding value to anyone or anything. If you're again, sorry to keep going on about property. If you invest, but, but in don't a, have to go on about property. Go on about being garage sales. At least there's a. At least you're adding value somewhere. Yeah, you're taking someone's junk and then you're finding you're repackaging it. Yeah. Right. So why did you give it a zero then, huh? Because you shouldn't be doing it. You're messing around in the wrong in the wrong market. At least you're adding value to somebody. See, we, making money at least. How much have you made from cryptocurrency? I have made money on it, but it's, any any money that I've made on cryptocurrency has has been absolutely 1 billion percent luck. I've not felt like, 
Yeah, man, I deserve that. I did well. And I've lost money as well. Could you, oh, I've lost money as well. Could you not argue that index funds are similar, though? Is it, is it not the equivalent to that? The, the thing is, with index funds, there's the history of it going yeah. up and up and up. What worries me about crypto, and this is why it potentially could even be worse than, than garage sales, even though that was a zero. I actually genuinely think you could very easily lose not, everything. Lose everything and lose a lot of money. I wouldn't even, personally, I wouldn't invest anything in crypto that I wasn't 100% happy to lose for a bit of fun experiment. With businesses whereby when you win, it's at someone else's expense, which is cryptocurrency, isn't it? If you win, it's at someone else's expense. It's like people push a coin. And then it goes up, and then it, 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 there's no actual. It's, it's almost like a Ponzi scheme. Right? It feels to right? me. Right? It does. Yeah. Where it's like the more people that invest, the higher it goes in value. But at some point, Ponzi schemes tend to collapse. Yeah. I'm However, not a fan. I do. I, I, do you know what I am a fan? I'm sorry to interrupt. I am a fan of. I like cryptocurrency. Yeah. As in, I like being able to be in control of money without the government being involved. Well, that's what I was about to say. I, that's I, awesome. Yeah. I, I do actually think that cryptocurrency has certainly got a place. Yeah. And I think that it is. One of the coins, I'm sure, will do well. And I, and I, do you know what those same as NFTs? NFTs, non-fungible tokens. I think that NFTs are amazing as a service. If you can use them, wow, absolutely brilliant. But like investing in Logan's NFT is just stupid. I think so. All right. So we're going to write that, what, three, four? Yeah, I'll give it three. Okay, copywriting. I get people picturing me every day on Instagram, messaging me saying, hey, I want to be your copywriter. And... Um, what are you saying about learning the skill of being a copywriter? I think it's a very good skill. What are you going to give it out of 10 as a money-making skill from zero to 10? Out of interest, before I answer that, why have you put copywriting in over anything else that's a skill? Like, what, how has that managed to make because it Because I see a lot of courses on copywriting. So, for instance, I know that Andrew Tate sells courses or in his real life Hustlers University thing, he, he will have courses specifically on copywriting. But why not video editing? for example. That is another one, actually. You know what? Thank oh, let me write that down. Video editing. I get people all the time asking me if they can do shorts for me. So they'll be like, hey, you've got long-term content. I'll turn it into short-term content and they'll just charge me. Yeah. And sales is another one where people come to us. I'm a great closer. All right. Uh, uh, but, but, Matt, but, I can't add every well, single that, skill. That's, that's my point, though. Why? Because to me... Because it's trending at the moment. It's popular. I'm getting loads of people DMing me, asking me, should I do copywriting? Oh, can I do copywriting for you? And it's just something that's popping. So what are you going to rate it from I, 1 to 10? I would say if you... I think it's a really important skill for any business. Yeah. And I think if you're naturally a great copywriter... If you wanted to start from scratch in business, what would you write from 1 to 10 as starting with being a copywriter and pitching that you can copyright to, to businesses? 4... I'll give it a seven. I think it's a really good skill. And I think that it's not only is it a really good skill, but it's a skill that a lot of businesses suck at. And I would say video editing, probably again, but, maybe but, a six. But don't you think if it's popping and everyone's doing it and you're getting DMs left, right and center, well, unless you've got a real flair Sorry. for it. What do you think about ChatGPT as a copywriter? Terrible, horrible. Firstly, it's American. Doesn't have a brain. It's, it's not terrible. It's not American if you it's say It's lazy. Creates and breeds laziness. But, but don't you think that the vast majority of the people that are saying they want to do copywriting are probably going to be using stuff like that. Well, then they won't last, will they? They'll, they'll, they'll do one or two and it'll be crap and then you'll stop you using it. You say it's them. American. You know that you can just say, answer this in British English and it will do it in British English. Next, rent to rent. Uh, Nine. Why nine? Because I think it's a fantastic way. Well, you've done, you've done, done it successfully. Yeah, yeah. Are you biased because you've done it successfully? Maybe. Probably. Probably some of these things, if I was, if for example, if I'd made loads of money as a copywriter. Deal selling, property sourcing. I think if I was starting in, that is what I would do. So I'm gonna have to give that a 10. Mm -hmm. This is the thing with deal sourcing. I, mean, I know I'm probably biased because I've be, I became a millionaire from deal sourcing. But it's the same as garage selling and, 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 and drop shipping to a point. But the difference is, it kind of, but it's way better on many levels. The first level is, if you're selling crappy little teddy bears, how much are you gonna make per sale? A couple pound? Even if you're selling trainers, how much you can sell per sale? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. Whereas if you're selling property investment deals, the average house is worth about a quarter of a million in the UK. If you're finding good deals and selling them, the investor's gonna happily pay you three, four, five grand. It's like a couple percent. And another thing Andrew Tate says, which is brilliant, is he says, money is like water. It's always moving. And find where the money is and get in the way. And deal sourcing, that's where the money is. That's where people are dropping big bucks. You move, you're moving into a space where there's lots of money. Whereas Correct. Whereas selling teddy bears in your garage is Just like crap. the exact opposite of that. Right. That's, that, that's why I gave it a zero. But the thing is as well with deal, with, with, with deal sourcing is you're also, you're not even putting any capital down up front because you're not buying trainers and then hoping that you can resell them. You're finding properties, negotiating them down in price and then passing them to an investor. I think deal sourcing is it, it has to be a 10. 
can. Rent to rent, again, same story. Like, you can control small stuff. Oh, I got this little thing, this little laptop, and da da But with rent to rent, you're controlling a property, pushing the value up. The margins are high, but also the average rent to rent will make you what, like a grand a month? It's almost passive. How much are you gonna make from doing garage? So, so yeah, absolutely brilliant. Next, network marketing. I'm gonna give network marketing uh, probably a, a nine. I think it's brilliant. I did it. I used to be a distributor for utility warehouse. Never made a lot of money doing it, to be fair. It was a slog. So it was a slog that you did for years and never made a lot of money. You've given it a nine. That makes no sense. Do you know why? Because the amount of personal development that I learned from it was just so good. And I met a lot of people that were making good money at it. So just because I didn't make a, I made a, made a bit of money, but just because I didn't make a lot of money, it'd be unfair for me to say, oh, it's not good. I did make money. That started me in business. I was introduced to Jim Rohn from Network Marketing. I'm an advocate for Network Marketing. And I just think the idea of building a team, it's almost like running your own business without the risk. The downside to Network Marketing is they can just close the business down. You don't have complete control. You're very limited and restricted on how you can advertise and what you can do. What did you give rent to rent? A 10. And deal, and, and deal saying you gave a 10? 10, yeah. So you think Network Marketing is just... Right, it would be like, oh, you could do rent to rent or network marketing. It's there or thereabouts in the same ballpark. Is that what you think? There's very little downside to network marketing in terms of there's very little risk. Okay, tell you my, one rent to my, rent, there is more risk. Let me tell you my biggest downside for um, network marketing. Go on. My biggest downside is oh, I've done a few. Not, not, I'm not, I, I've never made very much money either. Right. Which is weird, isn't it? Both me and you have made loads of money in other fields. I've never made that much money in network marketing. Why is that? Tell me. We were very young when we did network marketing. Yeah. We were very inexperienced. Right, well. And then that propelled us to what we're doing now. <laughs> Here's why I'm not a big fan. I'm just an advocate, bro. You're an, it's good. I'm glad. It's good. It's good that you're an advocate. Right. And I meet people that they said to me, I've just signed, oh, my husband just started network marketing. And I'm just so proud of him. I'm like, yes. I'm one of those guys. I'd like to go and speak at the, um, you know, like the mad conventions and stuff. Yeah. I don't know whether they'd have me. I'm not like through and through network marketing. But I'd love to go and encourage them, cheer them. I believe in it. In the same way that I believe in education. I believe in investing in yourself. I just believe in the philosophy. I learned so much. Uh, the people that you know that have done it, uh -huh. what percentage of them would you say have succeeded? Interestingly, all of them failed. However, nearly all of them, they went on to be successful so in, in business. So you think it's a good grounding? Very good grounding. But not very good for actually making money. So how could you possibly give it a nine? Next. No, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not letting this go. <laughs> if you think it's good grounding, but not very yeah. good for actually making money, I didn't how can say you it wasn't good for making money. But, but you just said that every single person that you know that's done it has failed. It isn't one of my issues with network marketing. I'm not even sure. I'd go stronger than that. I think that they don't care. The people that set the rules up, they don't care if you're successful or not. Mm hmm. I think what they care about, the whole model of network marketing is bug all your friends and family, bug everyone that you can think of. Mate, you're being really harsh. You're being really harsh. What do you give it out of 10? Six. Okay, so that's better than average. That's good. I'm glad we agree. Next, affiliate marketing. Oh, I see, I prefer affiliate marketing. Why? Uh, How can you prefer it when network marketing basically is affiliate marketing with just the fact that you can build a team? Because, a couple of reasons. One, one of the things, I, I don't really like the building a team thing. Because I think that... Did that not help you build a team? I think that with network marketing, all the focus is on building a team of low performers. Okay, affiliate marketing. What are you going to give it? Affiliate marketing... I would... I'm going to give it a nine. I think it's brilliant. I'm going to give it an eight. Affiliate marketing is, is what? Yeah. Selling other people's products. Yeah. And getting a commission. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Ah, dad makes a lot of money as an affiliate marketer. Most influencers on YouTube are affiliate marketers. They'll have links in their bios where they'll be selling other people's stuff. If you can position yourself as, as someone of authority or an expert, especially on social media, and then you can choose the product. Look at all the people that made an absolute killing from selling Andrew Tate's Hustlers University. Yeah. That were faceless, nameless people. Probably had no personality. Could have been 17-year-old kids in their mom's basement, but they were just chopping up micro content, pushing it out there, putting the link. Made a fortune. Cool. I think that's everything then. So what do you think, guys? Do you disagree with anything? Do you think that Russell was wrong on any points? Do you think I was wrong? Or were we both wrong? Let us know in the comments. How would you rate these things from 1 to 10? I hope whatever you want to do in business, I hope that you succeed, even if it is garage selling.